everyone. I am so glad to see you today. Thanks for joining me here in the Happy Place to Grow. I'm Mrs. Davis and it's summertime. Things are heating up out there and maybe you're getting a little bored. Well, you're probably not getting bored with summer break. However, there are just times on a hot sunny day you need to chill out and chilling out with a good book is definitely a good idea we are joining back together so that we can enjoy a good story from author and illustrator eric carl his artwork was just one of a kind it was beautiful, bright, and creative, and his stories, well, they're filled with cute characters and lots of things that we can think about as we're reading. You know, enjoying a good book is great, but there's lots of things that authors place in their stories to help us learn and extend our learning. For instance, when we read The Very Hungry Caterpillar, we were thinking about the days of the week. That's how today's story is. It's a great book. It's got colorful, very colorful, and cute, creative characters. There's some good messages for all of us to take away in this story, but there's some math going on. And I think you will enjoy us thinking about what time it is. Yeah, I love this story because not only does it give me information about a cute little bug insect and what that insect, that bug eats, but I can also brush up on my time telling skills and you can too. Today's story from Eric Carle is the grouchy ladybug. Grouchy. Think about the word grouchy. What comes to your mind when you think about grouchy? Maybe you, you've never heard that word before. If you're a Sesame Street kid, you've heard of Oscar the Grouch. And thinking about Oscar the Grouch or the word grouchy, some other words come to mind describing grouchy. Uh, crabby, cranky. When I think of a grouchy person, I think of frowning. I think of someone that's not in a good mood. Now we all feel grouchy every once in a while. We kind of feel crabby. Maybe we haven't gotten enough sleep. When you're grouchy, you act, you act inappropriately to others. You're snappy, you're short. You may say things that are not nice, grouchy. There is going to be a grouchy ladybug in the story and you'll see just exactly why that ladybug is described as grouchy. There's also a friendly ladybug. You know, when I think about the word friendly, what kind of words come in your mind? I think nice, polite, inviting. The words that come out of a friendly person are uh, words that want me to be around them. It's they like me, they're happy, they're joyful, and they treat everyone else in a way that brings about kindness and caring, friendly. Who do you want to be around? Crouchy person or friendly person? Well, in today's story, two ladybugs are going to meet. One is grouchy, and the other is friendly. Let's see what happens today in the story the Grouchy Ladybug, and you know, a title is definitely a clue into the main character. And although the Friendly Ladybug is in this, 
This story focuses on the grouchy ladybug. And the grouchy ladybug is going to fly around and um, keep being a little grouchy. You're going to see what happens uh, in the adventures of the grouchy ladybug today. It's fun to think about an insect flying and in this one the grouchy ladybug is going to fly and meet lots of different animal characters. And we're going to be brushing up on our time telling skills as well. So you see this whiteboard over here. Every time the grouchy ladybug is going to a new character, it'll be a different time. We're going to be thinking about time on the hour. And so if you're looking at an analog clock, which in this book, will there'll be a little analog clock. If you're thinking about the analog clock, the shorthand is the hour hand. So it's going to point to the hour. Is it going to be 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12 o'clock, right? And then the long hand points is the minute hand. And if it's o'clock, a brand new hour, that minute hand is going to be pointing up. It's not really pointing at the 12, it's pointing at 00, zero because this part of an analog clock, that's the minutes. One minute, two minute, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, and so on. So we're going to be thinking about time. This is a very busy story because we're going to be thinking about Eric's artwork, looking at the beauty, the strokes, the color. We're going to be thinking about what lesson the grouchy ladybug learns in, in its flying adventures. And we're going to be telling time on the hour. So let's get started. We've got a lot to dive into here. The Grouchy Ladybug by Eric Carl. I've got to stop off on the inside cover. And you see the green because this story takes place on a leaf or a plant of some kind. Look at those beautiful brush strokes. You've got to just enjoy the color, right? And then here is the title page and the dedication page. Now this is a special dedication because up in the corner, remember a dedication page is who the author is dedicating the book to someone that's inspired them. This is a fact and a dedication. First of all, in the corner, you can see these tiny little creatures. Those are called aphids. That's what a ladybug feasts on. Delicious. And aphids feast on plants. Aphids are very small insects. They suck the juice from leaves and then the leaves die. So they're not a very friendly uh, creature. Ladybugs eat aphids. So ladybugs have an important job. That's good for trees, shrubs, and other plants that have leaves. So that's a little fact page for you, a little fact about aphids and ladybugs. Now here's the dedication. To the ladybugs, I have dedicated this book. Three cheers for them. So there's his dedication. It's to ladybugs. Three cheers to the ladybugs. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. And there's the title page. You can see the body of a ladybug, the legs, one, two, three, four, five, six, because bugs, insects have six legs. They have their body, and then this creature, this insect, this bug, it has wings. So this hard outer shell opens up and the wings come out. So we can fly and crawl. Amazing. Beautiful. This story takes place at night. First page. It was night and some fireflies danced around the moon. At five o'clock, 
o'clock in the morning, the sun came up. So here's our little clock. And on this page, you can see up in the corner, I have to notice the analog clock. And then I'm going to put up here, see if we can get this in camera range here. It's five o'clock. So we've got our analog clock showing five o'clock, but we've also got digital. And if you're using the word five o'clock, let's put that up there. Let's notice our time. There's the leaf, the aphids, and the ladybugs. At five o'clock in the morning, the sun came up. A friendly ladybug flew in from the left and saw a leaf with many aphids on it and decided to have them for breakfast. The aphids are having breakfast of the juices in the leaf. And the friendly ladybug is going to eat the aphids. And it all works out fine, hopefully. But just then, a grouchy ladybug flew in from the right. It too saw the aphids and wanted them for breakfast. Now, I'm noticing on this page, there are lots of aphids. I think there's enough for both. What do you think? And of course, it's five o'clock in the morning. Let's see what happens next. Ah, uh, the two ladybugs meet. One's on one side of the leaf and the other's on the other side. Let's see what their conversation is all about. Good morning, said the friendly ladybug. Go away, shouted the grouchy ladybug. I want those aphids. We can share them, suggested the friendly ladybug. Definitely using a friendly tone. No, they're mine, all mine, screamed the grouchy ladybug. Or do you want to fight me for them? <sighs> well, if you insist, answered the friendly ladybug sweetly. It looked the other ladybug straight in the eye, very confident. The grouchy ladybug stepped back. It looked less sure of itself. Oh, you're not big enough for me to fight, it said. And then, why don't you pick on somebody bigger? I'll do that, screamed the grouchy ladybug. I'll show you. It puffed itself up and flew away. If you notice, the talking bubbles let you know. The grouchy ladybug, the friendly ladybug says, good morning. The grouchy ladybug says, go away. You can already see their personalities coming out. Remember this focus of this story is the grouchy ladybug. So let's see where the ladybug that's grouchy goes next. Hmm. And look at this stair step adventure. The ladybugs, look at these pages. How cool author Eric Carle made this book for us. Each page is a different creature. And I want you to notice each page is going to get a little bit bigger as we go along. And there's a time clock for each hour that the grouchy ladybug is on its adventure. Now you know it's one hour later. So we're going to go from five o'clock to six o'clock. So an hour later at six o'clock, let's see who the grouchy ladybug meets up with. Ah, this creature is fierce and it's bigger than the ladybug. So let's see what happens. At six o'clock, it met a yellow jacket. Hey, you said the grouchy ladybug want to fight? If you insist, said the yellow jacket, showing its stinger. I don't think I'd mess with that, would you? Uh-uh. No, no, no. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and it flew off. Well, let's see where it goes next. Next page. 
The next page is a little bigger because the next creature is just a little bit bigger. And the time is an hour later. Seven o'clock. So let's set our analog clock for an hour later. So the minute hand would tick, 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 tick. 60 minutes. 60 minutes is one hour. It's seven o'clock. Let's put the digital time up analog and then if you're using the word o'clock seven o'clock it's fun to tell time and show time on the hour in different ways okay let's find out who he meets next looks like some creature i don't want to run into look at those claws at seven o'clock it met a stag beetle Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, wanna fight? If you insist, said the stag beetle, opening its jaws. I guess those weren't claws. Those are the jaws. Wow. They look sharp and pointed. Watch out. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug. And it flew off. Just not learning its lesson, is it? Let's go to the next page, which is, again, a little bit bigger. There's the creature. And there's the clock. What time does that say? It's an hour later. What time comes after seven? Eight o'clock, we're getting one hour bigger each time. It's eight o'clock. I'll set the analog time for eight. So 60 minutes would tick, 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 tick. The hour that comes after eight, is, or the hour that comes after seven is eight. A digital clock would look like this, eight o'clock. There's no minutes that have ticked. If I'm using my word o'clock, I can just put an eight o'clock. Cool, let's see who he meets up with it at eight. Now this creature actually happens to be one of my favorite creatures to see in nature. Do you know what it is? It's called the praying mantis. They're pretty fierce. You can see the detail of the mouth and the claws. Let's see what he does at eight o'clock. At eight o'clock, it came across a praying mantis. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, wanna fight? If you insist, said the praying mantis, reaching out its long front legs. Hmm. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and it flew off. Well, at least one thing, it does fly off and not fight these creatures. It would never win. Okay, let's turn the page. This page is getting a little bit bigger. I love the stair step of the pages. At the top is the new hour. <laughs> After eight o'clock comes nine o'clock and he's meeting up with a bird. Yeah, bugs and birds. Mm -mm. He better fly on, but let's see what he does. Let's set our analog clock for, you guessed it, nine o'clock, tick, 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 tick. There's 60 minutes. After the hour of eight o'clock, it will be nine o'clock. There's our hour hand pointing at the nine. And the minute hand is pointing up at zero, zero. It's a brand new hour, no minutes have ticked. Now we've got the digital time and the word o'clock with the hour. Let's see what he does when he meets up with the bird. I don't think he should be messing with the bird. What do you think? <laughs> At nine o'clock, it almost flew into a sparrow. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Wanna fight? If you insist, said the sparrow, opening its sharp beak. Don't mess with that. Don't mess with that. If you're a buck. Oh, you're not big enough, 
said the grouchy ladybug and it flew off. You know, if you're reading this book and you're thinking about the pattern in this book, this would be an easy one to pick up the pattern and read yourself too because the creatures say the same thing. And so does the grouchy ladybug every hour. Up, oh, let's turn the page. Getting a little bit bigger and now it looks like maybe he's gonna meet up with a, uh, a creature that's in some type of water. The clock at the top says 10 o'clock. Oh, interesting. Let's set our little analog clock for the next hour. Tick, 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 tick. After nine comes 10 o'clock. Let's show the digital 10 o'clock. The hour is 10. No minutes have passed. If you're using the word o'clock, 10 o'clock. Cool. Let's see what creature this is. What do you think it is? No, it's not a crab. It's not a crayfish. It's a lobster. Hmm. I like to eat lobster. At 10 o'clock, it saw a lobster. So maybe it's over the ocean? I don't know. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, wanna fight? If you insist, said the lobster, stretching its claws, reaching out. It was going to be a fight, except you know what the grouchy ladybug always does. He never stays to fight. He always flies on. That might be a good strategy. <laughs> oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and it flew off. Hmm. Oh, this is definitely something I don't want to meet up with. I know you wouldn't want to meet up with this one. Does it really, really stink? And look at the time. The time is 11 o'clock the next hour. Page is getting a little bit bigger. And you know who this is by that black and white pattern. Watch out, it's a skunk! Let's change the time. Okay. All right. The hour that comes after 10 is 11. Tick, 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 tick. Let's get the next hour. The minute hand, whoop, the minute hand goes pointing past. There we go. It's up pointing at the zero, zero, because this shows the minutes. The hour hand is 11. And let's see what our digital time will look like. I'm just going to go see if I can go right on top of the five. I don't know if I can. I might have to let's take the five o'clock down. Let's put up our 11 o'clock here, getting in the view. Let's take these down too, so we can make space for our next set of o'clocks. Okay, we've got 11 o'clock, digital, if you're using the word, analog, and you know he's in the spiky, spiky skunk. And look at the color. You've got the orange. You've got the fluffy tail. Look at the detail in that skunk. All done by collage here at Carl's Art. Pops with color. At 11 o'clock, he bumped into a skunk. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the skunk, starting to lift its tail. Because if a skunk lifts its tail, you know what's going to happen. Spray! Skunk stinkyitis. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and it flew off. Now, also notice what's happening to the print. So let's go back to the very beginning on that very first creature. Look how small and tiny the print is. Now, each creature that gets a little bit bigger, the print gets a little bit bigger too. That's cool. Such an interesting detail. I love how Eric Carl is making us really think as we're reading, we're enjoying a good book, but we're also seeing some special details. Creatures get bigger, 
print gets bigger, page gets bigger. Cool, I love it. Okay, the next hour after 11 has to be 11, 12, one hour later. Here's what he meets up with at 12 o'clock. And then there's the little time clock, analog clock. This is the creature. Look at the beautiful details in the artwork there of that snake. Do you like snakes? Eh, a lot of people don't. 11 o'clock on the analog clock. Tick, 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 tick. Now at 12 o'clock, the hour hand is pointing at the 12. The minute hand is not pointing at the 12. It's actually pointing past the 12. If you're looking at an analog clock, it'll have an hour, a section of hours, and then it'll have a section of for minutes. It'll have little, little line dashes. Those are the minutes. So this is 12 o'clock. can be 12 o'clock noon or 12 o'clock a.m. in the early morning. This is 12 o'clock noon when it's lunchtime in the afternoon. Here's what 12 o'clock looks like. If you're using your digital clock, the hour is 12, no minutes have passed, it's a brand new hour, 12 o'clock. Uh-oh, let's find out about this snake. Will he make a mistake and kiss the snake? Ah! At 12 noon, it's spotted a boa constrictor, that's a type of snake, that squeezes its prey. Hey you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, all snake-like, said the snake right after lunch. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and it flew off. When he says right after lunch, uh, I think he's going to eat, he's going to eat that squirrel. Oh no, that's my dad. Print's getting bigger, page is bigger to get that whole snake in. Look at the blue background behind the snake, beautiful. You know, it's not really, we don't like to think about it, but it's kind of the animal world. One animal eats another animal. It's kind of the circle of life, the chain of life. So even though it's sad for us, it's, it's how life goes on and that's the way animals act. Okay, what hour comes after 12 o'clock? The next hour would be 12 and then one, one in the afternoon. Let's see what he meets up. Page is getting bigger. Print is getting bigger. Clock says one o'clock because after 12 o'clock is one o'clock. What kind of creature is that? Have you ever seen one of those? Hmm. Kind of, um, in my opinion, a, a creepy sounding uh, animal. At one o'clock, it happened upon a hyena. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, oh, wanna fight? If you insist, said the hyena, laughing eerily and showing its teeth, they have kind of a creepy sound that they make it almost sounds like it's uh, a laughter. It's kind of creepy. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and it flew on. So let's do our time. Met up with a hyena at one o'clock. We're gonna keep that, we're gonna tick that minute hand around. Tick, 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 tick. 60 minutes, and then our new hour one o'clock in the afternoon. Let's show the digital time. There's one o'clock. And then if you're using the word o'clock, one o'clock. Wow, he's really having an adventure. And also I'm noticing too, are you noticing the sun on each page? You know, the sun gets higher and higher and higher during the day. And then, of course, at the end of the day, it starts going down. It starts setting. That's another detail that Eric is leaving us with on each page. You've got to just enjoy and read slowly 
And that's why reading a book more than one time is helpful because you notice more cool details. Okay, we're at one o'clock. Okay, now the next creature he meets is at two o'clock. What kind of creature is that? A gorilla, not a monkey, gorilla. The time is now one hour later, tick, 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 tick. 60 minutes have passed. Let's move that hour hand to two from one to two. The hour that comes after one is two, two o'clock. He just met up with a fierce and creepy hyena. Now he's meeting up with a gorilla. Print is getting bigger. Look how small he is compared to the gorilla. I like this too because it's showing the size of the creatures that the ladybug is meeting and how small, but he's still willing to go and want to make a fight. Huh. At two o'clock, it met a gorilla. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the gorilla, beating its chest off. Oh. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and it flew off. Look at the jungle colorfulness behind that gorilla. Bright, vibrant. Okay, it's another hour. The hour that comes after 2 o'clock is tick, 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 tick. Let's do the minute hand, 60 minutes, tick, 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 tick. Now it's going to be 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Digital time for three o'clock, hours three o'clock, three o'clock using your word o'clock. Oh boy. You can see where the sun is. It's starting to go down because it's getting later in the day. What creature is that? Did you say rhinoceros? Yeah, you're right. It's a rhinoceros. A lot of people call it a rhino for short. At three o'clock, it ran into a rhinoceros. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? If you insist, said the rhinoceros, lowering its horn. Nah, I don't want to meet up with a rhinoceros horn. Do you? Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug. And what did it do? It flew off. There's the little time clock. Uh-huh. Oh, there we go. It looks like the ladybug is, the grouchy ladybug is having an adventure. It's going around the world. It's seeing some animals that it probably wouldn't normally see. I know you know this is an elephant. And the little time clock in the corner up here is the hour that comes after three o'clock. And there's the sun setting, getting lower and lower. So, let's see what happens when he meets up with an elephant at tick, 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 60 minutes later at four o'clock. And we'll put our digital time, four o'clock and four o'clock. At four o'clock, it encountered an elephant. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Can you say this with me? Wanna fight? Did you say it grouchy? If you insist, said the elephant, raising its trunk and showing its big tusks, which I think on an elephant are teeth. That'd be good to research find out more about these animals. Oh, you're not big enough. Yeah, you said it with me, said the grouchy ladybug, and it flew off. Where do you think it's going to go next? It's four o'clock. Sun's going down. I see a clue. Where do you think ladybug is going to fly off next? Somewhere blue. Hmm. Oh, that wasn't somewhere. That was something blue. 
Ah, blue whale. Now it's flying over the ocean for sure. That's where you would see a whale. It's now five o'clock, but not five o'clock in the morning. It's five o'clock in the evening. Uh-huh. Let's see what five o'clock, because you know there's 24 hours in a day. So each hour is going to be visited one twice. Once in the morning, once in the afternoon. Five o'clock in the afternoon, meeting up with a whale. Now you know what? A whale's very large. Well, let's see what happens next. At five o'clock, it met a whale. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug, want to fight? But the whale did not answer at all. Silence can be golden. <laughs> You're not big enough anyway, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. It's not even going to have a conversation with the whale. The whale's just going to be quiet. Look at the water down there. Look at the cute and interesting details with that kind of waves and colors. Greens and whites and blues. Uh-oh. It's still over the whale. And I'm noticing the time clock. It's not another hour. Now we've got increments of 15. So at five o'clock, that's an hour, but now he's traveling on. That whale is so long. Uh-huh. Oops. At that, it took him 15 minutes. So 15 minutes have went by. You know how we said 60 minutes for an hour? 5, 10, 15. It took him 15 minutes, and he's still not over the whole whale because a whale is a very large creature. At 5.15, the grouchy ladybug said to one of the whale's flippers, that's as far as he could travel. I don't think you should talk to flippers. They're not going to answer. Hey, you want to fight? But it got no answer, so it flew on. Huh, yeah. That is a very long creature. Look at the beautiful water. And look at the time clock. It's still not a new hour. Now we're at 15 minutes later. So 5.15 and 15 minutes later is 5.30. Half of an hour has went by. It's taken him that long to travel past the whale, and he's still not past it. It's very large. Uh-huh. So, 5.30 looks like this. Half of an hour. So, this is a whole hour. And then half of an hour. So, half of the hour. 5.30. Mm-hmm. At 5.30, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's fin, mm -hmm. that's how far it's traveled. It's still not past the whole whale. Hey, you, want to fight? But it got no answer, so it flew on, and the print is getting smaller. Hmm. I wonder what the ladybug's thinking. Hmm. Look at this cool page. That's the end of the whale. The little clock up here is not even at 6 o'clock yet. It's at 15 minutes later, which is 5.45. When it gets here, 15 more minutes, it'll be a new hour. But right now, it's 5.45. Let's see what happens at that time. This is definitely the largest creature he's met. It took about three pages or four to pass him. At quarter to six, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's tail, Hey, you, want to fight? And the whale's tail did respond, but not with a voice. And the whale's tail gave the grouchy ladybug such a slap. Pam. It flew across the sea and across the land. 
There it goes. There goes the sunset over the ocean. Mm. He's flying, but he's not flying because he's flying. He's flying in a whoosh of air from the tail of the whale. Now, you know what time it is. It is now back to six o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. We're at six o'clock in the evening. 30, 6 o'clock. He's landing back at the place he started with the friendly ladybug. He's enjoyed those aphids all day long. At 6 o'clock. There's your little time clock. That must have been a hard slap. It just took 15 minutes for him to get home. At 6 o'clock, the grouchy ladybug arrived right back where it had started from. <laughs> Ah, here you are again, said the friendly ladybug. You must be hungry. I love how the friendly ladybug is still friendly. There are still some aphids left. You can have them for dinner. Oh, so friendly. Oh, thank you, said the wet, tired, and hungry ladybug. And the talking bubbles say, Thank you. You're welcome. I think the grouchy ladybug definitely learned a lesson. After all that adventure, he was tired, wet, and hungry. He didn't have anything to eat in the whole day. He should have shared from the beginning, right? I think he's definitely learned his lesson, don't you? And the, la and the friendly ladybug did not hold a grudge just invited the grouchy ladybug to enjoy the leftover aphids because there were enough for everyone. Oh, cool. Very interesting. Good story. Let's see what happens at the end. Remember, it started in the night. The, the fireflies were dancing around the moon. This is the end of the story, and it ends at the end of the day. Soon, all the aphids were gone. Thank you, said the leaf. Remember that aphids suck all the juices out of the leaves of plants and shrubs and they end up dying, the leaves do. So the, the leaf said thank you to the ladybugs for doing their job. You're welcome, answered both ladybugs. And they went to sleep. The fireflies, who had been sleeping all day, came out to dance around the moon. And I bet in the morning, when the ladybugs wake up, they'll both be friendly. And I think the grouchy la uh, ladybug will be a friend. The friendly ladybug, I'm sure it's learned a valuable lesson. Well, what do you think about the grouchy ladybug? Such a fun story. Again, very colorful. We saw that the pages got bigger. Every page was very colorful. We saw really cool creatures. We saw differences in size of print pages and creatures. We saw that the sun was rising and going down with each passing hour, and we brushed up on our telling time skills. Wow, a story can lead us to many places. We can learn so many interesting things as we're reading and enjoying books. And we might be surprised if we look close enough to learn that there's more to a good story than just the words on the page. The artwork can inspire us and we can learn about creatures and even we can brush up on our math skills. So the next time you crack open a book, take a closer look. 
you just might find some surprising and interesting things in each and every page. Well, this has been a fun time together and a very fun and colorful Eric Carl story indeed. All right, I want you to enjoy, uh, join me again because we are going to continue reading the best and my favorite Eric Carl books. There's so many, over 70. We can't read them all, but I'm going to try to select some of the very fun and interesting books to share with you. So please join me again as we travel through the wonderful world of Eric Carl. And as always, keep reading, look closely at your storybook pages, and find some interesting learning concepts. And I can't wait to see you again as we read and enjoy books together. Now, we'll close up. And as always, have a good one.